Hello everyone, welcome to another Adobe Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video I want to focus on the masking aspect, so we're going to turn this shot into this one. If you want to follow along, as always you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. This is our base raw image. It is pretty well exposed, looking at the histogram. I do want to make it look a lot more grim and dark. For this purpose a lot of masking will be involved. Before we can apply the masking however we need to set the image up first and then that's done in the basic tab. I am going to change the profile right away going from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral which will give us a super flat image to work with. This means we have a lot more control over the contrast and the saturation and things like that. Next up the white balance. I don't think there's much to change here, still I'd want to slightly raise the temperature and I also want to slightly raise the tint. Next up, let's work on the brightness. Although the histogram looks good with no over or under exposure, I still want to make this image look a lot darker. So I'm doing this by simply dropping the exposure and I'm dropping it a lot. While I do this I keep a close eye on the histogram because I don't want to underexpose anything. But at this point this looks pretty good. At the same time I do want to add some contrast by bringing up the highlights. And let's also introduce some whites. Just like that. And while we're in here I'm also going to push the vibrance a bit. Just to have a little more saturated image. Okay and that is already it for the base adjustments. We pretty much have set up the image for the masking part. So let's do this. For those of you who are not familiar with the masking stuff, you can find those under the masking point right there. And Lightroom offers you a bunch of different masks. I am going to use pretty much every mask for this shot. First off, I do want to enchant this area which get hit by the sunlight. Right now, it's almost not that visible. However, I can change that. So to target that area I'm simply using a radial gradient. I'm making it rather thin to fit the shape of the light. And I'm also going to rotate it just to place it over this light patch. Once I have aligned this radial gradient I'm simply bringing up the exposure. I'm also going to introduce way more highlights and a lot more whites. Actually, let's turn it up all the way. And this will already have a big impact on the image. Let me just turn off this mask for a moment so you can see the difference. So with this mask, we have made the light a lot stronger and thus just brought a lot more attention to the subject right there in the center. We can further work on this situation by using a linear gradient for the very near foreground. Right here at the bottom part you can see we have a lot of shadows. We can make the shadows stronger by targeting them with this linear gradient. And I'm going to simply drop down the exposure. Let's drop it quite a bit to make it dark. But again, keep an eye on the histogram to not underexpose anything. Perfect. Now this starts to look really really good down there. Next up, I think the bottom part looks fine for now. I do want to start working on the sky. For this image, you can see we have a very clear edge between the mountains and the bright sky. This means we can pretty safely use a select sky mask and this will just tell Lightroom to automatically detect the sky and mask it for us. So there are parts of the mountains selected but I don't think that's a big deal. We could further adjust this mask by subtracting parts. I however don't think that's necessary. Now with this selection I do want to bring down the exposure just to give the sky some more darkness. Then I want to bring out those clouds and as I said in the intro I want to make it look very dark and grim. So that means I just want to have some very detailed clouds that almost look like storm clouds. We can do that by first pushing the clarity all the way up and this will give us a lot more details in here. But we can also use the contrast just pumping it up which will make them look a lot more grim. Perfect. After those adjustments it seems like the sky has some kind of yellow color cast. 
I'm not a big fan of that, so I want to change that by simply bringing down the white balance temperature and thus just introducing some more blue tones to the sky. Let's keep it at that point for now, we can always can change that later. Then let's add a linear gradient on top of the sky. I'm only going to target the very top part since that is the area where I want the sky to be the darkest. Again, to darken things, I'm just going to drop the exposure. Here we can drop it quite a lot to get the desired effect. Now it really looks like a big thunderstorm is rolling over those mountains. At this point I'm almost done with the sky. However, I do want to add some highlights and some subtle glow to a few bright parts. I am doing this by creating a radial gradient. So let's create one for this big bright part right there. And I'm always making sure to overlap something, like in this case the mountain edges. The reason is by overlapping it and adding the glow effect, I get some nice looking light bloom effect. You can see this when I turn down the dehaze. So the light kind of spills over the mountains. In this case, I don't want to drop the dehaze too much, just a little bit to get some subtle glow. And I do want to raise the blacks as well. And finally, maybe introduce some whites to make this area a little brighter. All right, then let's adjust the size of this radial gradient a bit. I think that looks good. As I said, I do want to add this glow part on a few areas. So what I can do here is to just add one more radial gradient. And let's see, here is a good spot, I guess. Let's add one more on the other side. Perfect. Now, after all those masking adjustments, the mountains start to go under a little bit. I do want to change that and add a lot more structure to them. For that, I think I can use a color range mask to specifically target them. So let's try this. Create new mask and here we choose color range. And I'm picking a color from somewhere in the mountain. Sadly, the color is too similar to other areas of the image, but we can make use of the refine slider to further target down the mountains. You can see this works pretty good. So let's not go too low, otherwise it might look strange. But I think we can give it a try like this. What I want to do with this mask is to simply bring up the highlights first. Then I also want to introduce some whites, some shadows. And then to make them pop, I'm going to use a lot of clarity. Let's also add some texture just to give them a sharper look. All right, now I still think the selection might look a bit strange. So I'm playing around with the refine slider and let's see if we can fix the look a little more. You can see when I'm pushing it, the sky is changing as well. We don't want that. So I'm going to simply subtract and say select sky. This way we are removing the sky from this mask. So we are only targeting the mountains. We can further adjust the mask by subtracting a brush. Let's make the overlay visible for once. Now I can simply brush over all the areas which I don't need. This looks much, much better already. You can see you don't have to be that precise. It works anyways. So if there's still some leftover selection down here anywhere, it doesn't really matter that much. Next up, I do want to target the whole upper portion of the image. So I'm using just another linear gradient and drag it over the image like this. With the upper part, I do want to add a little more punch. Let me deactivate the overlay so you can see things better. So I want to add a little more punch and I'm doing this by just adding some more clarity. That might be a bit too much. I think that's a good spot right there. And finally, I do want to create one last mask to just target the snowy patches on the mountains. For this task, I'm again using a color range mask. Just click somewhere on the snowy patch. Again, you can see the selection is way too big. So let's make use of the refine slider again. I'm going to drop it pretty much all the way down to target only those bright white patches. Actually, I think I might have selected the wrong point. So let's try a different one. This is looking much closer to the selection I want. 
Again, we have some parts of the sky selected. For that reason, just go to Subtract and choose Select Sky again. All right, perfect. Again, I'm deactivating the overlay here. And now to make the snow brighter, I'm simply going to push the exposure. And it's looking much, much better now. All right. And that is the image after targeting a few specific areas with masking. At this point, what is left to do is the color grading. So let's head into the HSL panel here. I want to start with the luminance because with the luminance, I can further target this bright patch in the foreground and make it a little more brighter by just bringing up the yellow luminance and the green luminance. Perfect. Then I do want to head into the saturation tab real quick. I'm not a big fan of the color of the sky, so I do want to bring down the aqua saturation a notch. And let's bring down the blue saturation as well. Then you might notice some orange tones in the mountains. I do want to bring them out a little more by bringing up the orange saturation all the way up. It's a tiny difference, but it is visible. So that's pretty good. And finally, let's just bring down the green saturation very, very slightly. Okay, that looks great. For this image, I'm not going to apply any split toning since I quite like the colors of this image. This means all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. And here I'm always applying the same settings. I'm dropping the radius, increase the details, add some masking. I only want the important parts of the image to get sharpened, just like that. And now let's push the amount. Perfect. And that is the finished image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.